All right, then, guys. This is the second video in the 18th edition public draft um, series that we're doing, and this one's just going to look at the changes suggested for part two definitions. Okay, so um, three new three new definitions have been put in are uh, relating to combined short circuit currents. Now, combined short circuit current is defined as a prospective current that a circuit or a switching device protected by a specified short circuit protected device can satisfactorily withstand for the total operating time of that device under specified conditions of use and behavior. So this is the current that a circuit or a device or a switch or a component can tolerate while the short circuit protective device protecting that circuit is doing its thing. We have one here for combined short circuit protection which is regarding two short circuit protected devices in series over current protected devices if you will so it's the over current coordination in short circuit conditions of two OCPDs in series as illustrated here resulting in a combined short circuit current capability that is higher than one the combined capability maximum short circuit current which can be handled by two devices in series these will be introduced in 536 later on in our part 5 video, but um, the combined short circuit current term is here now. We have continuity of service. This is regarding things like um, safety services. You have your classification, your no break, immediate break, um, long break. Whenever you have this and you need to have a continuity of service, we now have to define what that is. So it's the extent to which the operation of an electrical system approaches the intended state of freedom from a supply interruption. We have control and protective switching device or a CPS device. This is a switching device or equipment that is capable of operation other than, than by hand but with or without local manual operating means. It provides both functions of contactor and OCPD. coordination of equipment. The correct way of selecting uh, devices in series to ensure safety and continuity of service of the installation, taking into account short circuit protection and or overload protection and or selectivity. So for example you may have a piece of electrical equipment that doesn't tolerate a prospective fault current of 3000 amps for example while the circuit at the distribution board supplying that circuit has a protective um, device with a braking capacity of only uh, of 6,000 so while it has a tolerance of up to 6,000 at the device the equipment beyond it doesn't have that tolerance and is suffered and probably damaged from that so coordination now means that while we have a device capability we now have to consider equipment capability and um, well yeah electrical devices yeah so anything after that has to have the same capability uh, discrimination is now moved to selectivity, so that's just moved in the book. We have electric vehicle charging equipment and assembly, including one or more charging points. So that's the electric vehicle charging point now. The foundation earth electrode. This is a conductive part buried in the soil under a building foundation or preferably embedded in concrete of a building foundation, generally in the form of a closed loop. Now the foundation earth electrode is a, a new thing that's going to be introduced and it's aimed at TN systems it'll be primarily for new builds and the purpose of this is to um, support the possibility of a open neutral on your supply and the voltage variations that you'll get as a result they actually do have this in other parts of the world they have it in the UAE where I've done some work um, so it's interesting they're bringing this in I'll be doing some more um, revising on you know whether it's existing systems or new builds only, and you know how they're planning on implementing a, and um, into implementing this into systems because there'll be a lot of objection to this as a as a workable solution. Plus, there's obviously the the actual electrode readings that you'll need to achieve as well. We have inland navigation vessel, a vessel used for commercial or administrative purposes, navigating in inland waterways. So this is down rivers and streams, it's narrow boats and etc not ferries or cargo ships. Uh, Non-compliance, a non-conformity that may give rise to danger. That's fairly obvious. We have 
energy efficiency. Now, energy efficiency is a, it's a, it's a whole new part, part 8. And so, like medical locations, when that came in, it's got its own little area in part 2. So, the energy efficiency definitions. We've got active electrical energy efficiency measure. This is a measure for the optimization of electrical energy that is produced, supplied, flowing, and consumed by an installation for the best permanent functionally equivalent service. In this context, the word measure is to be understood as a provision. Current using equipment. This is electrical equipment is intended to convert electrical energy into another form of energy, such as light, heat, or mechanical energy. Now, um, this is something that I've done a lot with thermal imaging training with regards to energy. Um, what we need to remember is when we talk about energy, energy doesn't um, change, it just converts and so when we generate energy and we then use energy we actually we don't lose it we transfer it which we, we convert it and when we do our electrical design one of the principles of our electrical design is okay let's design a cable so that the conductor is as small as it can be to carry the current and we design it as small as it can be to achieve safety but then also second to safety not waste money so we always make sure that the cables are small enough to carry the current but not too big to waste money. The knock-on the knock effect of that though is reducing the cable size has created the, the, the likelihood of heat generation. We're going to generate heat when we put current through these cables or we're going to group them or we're going to have luminaires that give off heat and we now need to realize well all this heat is energy that we've paid for and generated and we're now just throwing into the atmosphere. We, we're, we're not capturing it, we're not reusing it. So we need to acknowledge with our selection of equipment, our selection of cables, that we're going to, some consideration now needs to be given to the amount of heat that we are going to freely throw away with our system. We have a distribution electrical system, a uh, system design, sorry, design of cabling and associated electrical equipment for the distribution of electrical energy. Efficiency measures, the level of implementation of measures to improve energy efficiency of an installation. We also have EEPL, which is the level of energy efficiency improvement attained by measures implemented for improving the energy efficiency of the installation. So this is the level of improvement that was reached by these measures. When we combine that with the efficiency measures, we then get the actual efficiency class, the EIEC. This is a combination of efficiency measures and energy efficiency performance levels and there are targets and score systems to reach and we'll cover that in a part 8 video. The efficiency parameter influencing factor on the energy efficiency of the installation. Load shedding the approach where the electrical loads are switched off for variable periods to, or of time to optimize demand. Mesh Group of electrical equipment powered from one or more circuits of the installation for one or more zones including one or more services for the purpose of electrical energy efficiency. And metering. Applying a meter device that measures energy or other form of consumption. So those two slides there are the energy efficiency specific definitions. Carrying on with the rest we now have the overcurrent protective device which we should have all known anyway is a device provided to interrupt an electric circuit in case the conductor current in the electric circuit exceeds a predetermined value for a specified duration, so like an MCB. Selectivity. Now, discrimination has moved to selectivity. It's the same wording. They have added to selectivity, though, partial selectivity and total selectivity. And those are separate definitions as well, but they are also both under selectivity. So they've kind of right now written it in two places. So under selectivity, they say... Partial selectivity is up to a given overcurrent lower than the braking capacity of a downstream device, while total selectivity is for all overcurrents up to the value of the braking capacity of that downstream device. We've also changed our wording for RCDs. Now, the residual current device was a mechanical switching device or association of devices intended to cause the opening of contacts when the residual current attains a given value under a specified condition. Slight change, it's now a mechanical switching device designed to make, carry and break current under normal service conditions and of course the opening of the contacts when the residual current attains a given value under a specified condition. It's got a note 
that a residual current device can be a combination of various separate elements designed to detect and evaluate the residual current and to make and break the current. It also says the RCD includes devices such as RCCBs, RCBOs, CBRs and MRCDs. If you're not familiar with them, then we'll cover them later on in part 5 as well. The MRCD, though, is a modular residual current device type, so you've probably seen those in control panels or whatnot. Last one here, we've got short circuit current rating, ISCCR. The maximum perspective short circuit current for the power system for which the device in conjunction with the disconnector specified is rated and this short circuit protected device SCPD is a device intended to protect a circuit or part of a circuit against a short circuit current by interrupting it. They're adding some new devices in the document. We've got these SCPDs. We've got the other one that we had earlier on which was the... CPS device. We've also got one for Arc Flash, the AFFD. So we're going to see how they're integrated into systems as we get close to the release of the book. And we'll give you a bit more information on that. Okay. That closes the definition. It says this foundation earth electrode is interesting. We're going to see what kind of use that's going to have. The uh, energy efficiency is obviously very important, but there's a whole part eight to cover them in more detail. And we'll look at the combined short circuit currents later on in chapter 53. We're going to move on to a part 4 video next because part 3 has again little to no difference. If anything comes out we'll introduce a part 3 video at a later time. Alright guys, well I'll see you in the part 4 video. It's going to be a larger video, a lot more content. So prepare for that. Cheers.